Well, is there any issue on which Hillary is more conservative than President Bush? The answer is yes. The budget. The budget. The budget. Look at that. You remember when we paid down the debt three years in a row for the first time in 70 years? We had 22.7 million new jobs versus 5 million. You didn't have a housing crisis, you didn't have a lot of these problems, and we were in control of our economic destiny. Wait, what did you just say? We were in control of our economic destiny. The Congressional Budget Office said the following in January 2001, the final days of your administration. Over the longer term, however, budgetary pressures linked to the aging and retirement of the baby boom generation threatened to produce record deficits and unsustainable levels of federal debt. The CBO is saying in the final days of your administration that we faced an unsustainable level of federal debt does not sound like control of economic destiny to me. Quoting Sherlock Holmes, we must look for consistency. Where there is want of it, we must suspect deception. So whether you consider yourself a liberal, conservative, or moderate, whether you're a Democrat or Republican or independent, you should want this country to get back to arithmetic. And what you're telling us does not add up. Based on the deception that I hear, we're going to take a look at the economy and budget of the late 1990s through the eyes of a forensic accountant. And with seven years of data now available to us, there is no reason for any mystery or any misunderstanding as to the status of the economy when you left office. The focus will be on the January 2001 CBO report that was 190 pages long projecting the 5.6 trillion baseline budget surplus over the next 10 years and we will analyze the actual expenditures and revenues that occurred during the 1990s and 2000s. And anybody who's been listening knows the 5.6 trillion projected budget surplus is often being cited in Hillary Clinton's campaign for president. We've gone from a projected 5.6 trillion dollar surplus when George Bush became president. There are two components to a budget. One is expenditures or outlays, the other is tax revenues. So to understand the economy of the 1990s and budget, you have to understand each component, how the tax revenues occurred and how the expenditures or outlays were spent. Here is the first of a series of videos. This one is on expenditures or outlays. Here is a graph of the 1962 to 2007 tax revenue and outlays. The blue line is the tax revenues and the brown line is the outlays. Adding more details to the graph, you can see that the, when the blue line is on top, you have surplus. When the brown line is on top, which is the outlays, you have deficits. I have 1995 marked, and then 2000 was the peak surplus because that's when the blue line was the highest above the brown line, and then 2003 was the maximum deficit so far, and that's when the blue line was further from the brown line. Let's look at the outlays. There are two components of spending. One is discretionary, the other is mandatory. This graph demonstrates how discretionary spending was cut from 1993 through 2000 and mandatory essentially tracked even with the increase of GDP. The graph also shows how mandatory spending is increasing after 2000 as relative to GDP. Mandatory spending is primarily Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid. The increase in mandatory spending highlights the significance of the aging population and the aging baby boom generation in the forthcoming retirement as this mandatory spending will increase. And of course as mandatory spending increases it will put more pressure on the discretionary spending. The final point I want to make is how mandatory spending is becoming a bigger piece of the expenditure budget. You can see that demonstrated in this graph because the brown line being the mandatory spending is above the blue line which is discretionary spending. The growing rate of mandatory spending is a critical point. Here again is a sentence from the 2001 CBO report stating the budgetary pressures from the aging and retirement of the baby boom generation threatened to produce record levels of unsustainable federal debt. Let's leave mandatory spending and move to discretionary spending. <laughs> 
So let's look at the individual components of discretionary spending. This graph is in the 1962 to 2006 discretionary spending as a percentage of GDP. And the two vertical marks are 1993 to 2000, which is essentially the Clinton administration. And from looking at this graph, you can see a total spending was cut primarily from cuts in defense spending as international, international and domestic were essentially flat. So in conclusion, when it comes to spending cuts during the Clinton administration, they were primarily directed towards defense spending. Also, there is no question that total discretionary spending has increased as a percentage of GDP during the Bush administration. As of 2006, the percentage of discretionary spending to GDP is approximately equivalent to what it was in 1993, 1992, somewhere in that range. A final point on the discretionary spending also comes from the 2001 CBO report that projected the $5.6 trillion budget surplus over the next 10 years. And that point is that CBO in the report says the Deficit Control Act requires the CBO to use inflation factors and to assume that current policies remain in effect. Therefore, the baseline projection is not a prediction of future outcome. So the two points here are one, the CBO is not independent. And the second one is every time you hear a politician quoting the 5.6 trillion, it is not a prediction by the CBO. So in review, the, during the Clinton administration from 1993 to 2000, discretionary spending was reduced primarily in the area of defense. And finally, the CBO projected those defense cuts forward to continue forward for the next 10 years, only increasing at the rate of inflation as required by law. So now you can move to the revenue video that discusses how, how the uh, revenue spike occurred in, in the late 1990s and 2000 and how that spike was projected forward for the next 10 years.